Welcome. My name is David, also known as Die the IT Guy. In this lesson we will learn the word essentials. When you open Word, you will see two main areas. Across the top edge is the ribbon. This is always above the document. The ribbon contains your buttons and commands. Before we proceed, let's save our file. On the ribbon, click the File tab. A large window opens. Here you take care of saving or printing your document. In the left column, click Save. A dialog box will open. Use this box to tell Word where to store the document. First, choose your folder. If you haven't already created a folder, you can click on the new folder icon and do so now. I've already created my folder. I've called it Parklife. And the subfolder, Press Release. I'm also going to name the document, Press Release. Click on Save to complete. After saving the document, I can continue to type. Always remember to save your work as you go. There are a few ways you can do this. First, you can click on the disk icon. Second, press and hold the control key, then type S. Finally, you can click on the file tab, then click save. Notice that the document name I chose now appears here at the top of the screen. Below the ribbon we have the documents area. This looks like a blank sheet of white paper and takes up most of the window. Look at the top left of the document. You should see a blinking vertical line. This is the cursor. The cursor lets you know where your typing will appear on the page. Word is now waiting for you to begin typing. As you type, notice that the text you enter pushes the cursor to the right. When I reach the end of this line, I shall press enter to start a new line. I'll now type my headline. As this is a headline, when I reach the end I shall press enter to start a new paragraph. I'm now typing what's called the body text. This is the main body of words or copy in any type of document. If you make a typing error, just press the backspace key to delete one character at a time. I should point out that this document is a work of fiction created simply for these classes. As you type the body text, when you reach the end of a line, don't worry about pressing enter. In this case, Word will automatically move the cursor down for you. You can see that Word has underlined nationwide in blue. There is also a red wavy underline. We'll deal with these in a few moments. Don't forget to have the correct dictionary active. For instance, USA and UK English have quite a few differences. There you see the automatic word wrap. Bear with me, I'll soon have this finished. When I finish typing this line, I will press enter to start a new paragraph. If you want more space between the paragraphs, just press enter again. OK, let's talk about these wavy coloured lines. If you make an error, a word doesn't recognise a word. You will be warned that there is a possible spelling or grammatical error. Word does this by inserting a wavy red, green or blue line beneath the possible error. So what do these mean? A red underline. This indicates either a possible spelling error or a word that isn't recognised. A green underline. Word thinks that the grammar should be looked at. Last but not least, a blue underline. 
The word is spelled correctly, but doesn't seem to be correct for the sentence. So what do we do about these underlines? Let me finish typing this, then I'll explain. Only this line to do. Okay, done. If I right click on Nationwide, which has a blue underline, a dialog panel pops up. Word offers me two alternative spellings and a choice of actions. I'm selecting the hyphenated version. As you can see, this automatically replaces the original. The underline has now disappeared. Note that these underlines do not print. So if you wish to, you can ignore them. When you see green or blue underlines, Take a moment to check the grammar and correct word usage. Now I'll work through the other corrections. I missed the apostrophe here. Now looking at Park Life, it's the name of the website. So I'll ignore word. Word has picked up that I misspelt beautiful. The word Klandaf is Welsh and is correct. If I wished, I could add this to my dictionary. The final warning is a green underline. Here the words each month are followed by a full stop. This should be a comma. As I make this change, word now underlines we. So right click on it. The dialog box pops up. I'll just click on we to correct this. Before we move on, Remember, if you know that you're right and word is wrong, you can always ignore the suggestions and get rid of the underlines. This press release is to announce the launch of a new website called Parklife. I can call attention to this important information by adding emphasis with bold, italic or underlined formatting. I'm going to make the word Parklife bold. To do this, look at the ribbon. As you can see, there are several tabs across the top. Each one represents an activity area. The second tab, the Home tab, is already selected. Each tab has several groups of commands. These show related items together. The name of each group is shown here, along the bottom edge. On the Home tab, I need the Font group. In this group you can see several buttons and commands. These each perform a specific action on the document. If I click to the right of the E, hold and drag across the whole word, move up to the font panel and select bold. As you can see, when you hover over these icons a handy tooltip appears. So I now click on this button and Park Life is now in a bold font. Each of these icons or buttons performs a specific task. I'm going to leave Park Life highlighted and click here on the text color icon, which is showing red at the moment. As you can see, Park Life has now changed to red. Clicking on the small down arrow on the right of the text icon brings up the color picker. I'll just pick black. Clicking here on font size allows a wide range of preset sizes. I'll just select 20 and you can see the increase. Now I'll repeat that but set the size back to 11. 
Now I'll just click away from Park Life and you can see the settings have been fixed. Most changes to text can be made from the font group. Formatting this way is useful when you want to change just a few things. There's also a way to make these changes with just one command. This is by using the styles command. Styles are also found on the home tab. Just choose the style you want, then the text size, font, attributes and paragraph formatting are changed for you automatically. If I select press release, then click on heading 2. Now click on a blank area and you can see the changes. I'll press the return key to increase the space between this and the heading. Now I'll select the heading and I'll also choose title. You can see that hovering over the icon produces a preview in the document window. I'm happy with that. Using the paragraph group I can also make lists. This group is right next to the font group. Lists can be unordered using bullet points or ordered lists using numbers. I want to create a list using these three park names. I'll separate out the list by first clicking to the left of Victoria. Pressing enter now drops them down the line. To create an unordered list I can select bullet points. As you can see a bullet point has now been inserted. But I want to create an ordered list. To do this select numbered lists. The bullet point now changes to a number one. Again Word has a wide variety of choices. For this document I want to use Roman numerals. So I click on the Roman numerals pane. From here on in the list will have Roman numerals. Now to finish the list. Now I must scroll across and remove this space and comma. The cursor is to the left of Heath so press enter. Again scroll across and delete the space plus and. Press enter. Finally, remove the full stop. Word has again picked up Clandaf. Just click ignore. Now we need to talk about margins. The blank space around the edge of the page is called the margin. There is a 1 inch or 2.54 centimeter page margin. This is constant at the top, bottom, left and right sides of the page. This is the most common margin width and a word default setting. You can create your own layout or choose from words presets. Again using the ribbon and then the page layout tab. Choose margins. You'll see icons indicating various margin sizes along with measurements for each of the margins. The first margin in the list is normal. This is the current margin. To get narrower margins, click narrow. If you want wider margins, just choose wide. When you click the margin type you want, the whole document will automatically change to the margin type selected. At some point, we all need to print a document. When you're ready to print, click on the File tab. In the left column, click the Print command. A large window opens which includes a print preview. Click the Print button. Choose the settings that you require and click Print. When you have finished and saved your work, close the file. To do this, click the File tab and in the left column click Close. If you've forgotten to save your work, work will prompt you to save with a choice of Save, Don't Save or Cancel. I hope you've enjoyed this class. If you have, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up as it's important to us. Thanks for watching.